What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with my review of the Umidigi A9 Pro. So let's get started. Now for full disclosure, Umidigi was kind enough to send this phone out to me to cover here on the channel. That being said, all opinions expressed in this video are completely my own. And in addition to that, I've covered a variety of different Umidigi devices here on the channel over the last couple of years. Now to my understanding, the Umidigi A9 Pro was updated in 2021, so this is the 2021 variant of the phone. And to see the most up-to-date pricing and the various configurations being offered for the device, I will be linking to the phone over on eBay in the video description. Now the Umidigi A9 Pro is factory unlocked for GSM carriers, however in the US, this phone most likely will be limited to being used with T-Mobile. Now typically in the past, GSM unlocked phones would work consistently with AT&T as well as Cricut Wireless, but from what I've been seeing lately, AT&T and Cricut have been getting stricter and stricter about which devices they allow on their network. So in general, I would recommend especially double checking to see if your carrier supports a phone like this one. Now with this device, we're getting a large 6.3 inch display, the phone itself is being offered in two different colors. You can get it in forest green, which is this color, and it's also being offered in onyx black. Now the display itself is LCD. It is a 1080p display, which is especially impressive for a budget phone like this one. We're getting a PPI of 409, and we're getting a 19 and a half by nine aspect ratio. So a more narrow but taller form factor here with the phone. Now, as you can see with this device, we do have a water drop notch up top and a little bit of a thicker bottom bezel. And in that notch is a 24 megapixel front facing camera. Now stay tuned for later on in the video as I'll be showing you a variety of different photo and video samples from the phone. Now this specific variant of the Umidigi A9 Pro does feature 128 gigabytes of internal storage and it also features micro SD card expansion. So it is really nice to see that we are getting so much internal storage here with the phone. Now with the Umidigi A9 Pro, there is no wireless charging, but we do get a fingerprint sensor on the back of the phone. So let's give that a try right now. Very quick, one more time. Awesome. So that is a very fast and responsive and accurate fingerprint sensor, which is really good. Now the phone does not have face unlock, unfortunately. So beyond using a pin code or a pattern, you are gonna have to use the fingerprint sensor on the back. And like I said, it does work very well. So overall, I'm very happy with it. Now on the back of the phone, we do have a quad camera setup. So we're getting a 48 megapixel main camera, a five megapixel ultra wide angle camera, a five megapixel depth sensing camera, and a five megapixel macro camera for close up images. So it is really cool to see here that we do get so many different cameras with the phone, giving us quite a few different abilities. Now this phone does support portrait mode for both the rear and front cameras, which is also really nice to see. Now with the device, we're getting six gigabytes of RAM and the MediaTek Helio P60 processor. So that's actually a really good combination, especially for a budget phone. And overall, I've had a really good experience using the Helio P60. It's definitely one of the more upper end mid-range processors from MediaTek. Now I did run a benchmark test using Geekbench 5 with the phone, and I'll show you the scores right here. You can see I got a single core score of 276 and a multi-core score of 1306. So what I recommend doing is running this test on your current phone and then compare your scores to these scores to get a better idea of whether or not this phone will be a performance upgrade for you. But from my experience of using the phone, everything runs very smoothly. I'll be showing you how web browsing performs a little bit later on in the video, but in general, Performance certainly is not an issue here with the phone. Now video recording with the Umidigi A9 Pro maxes out at 1080p with both the front and rear cameras, which is totally acceptable. And with this device, we're getting a pretty large battery at 4,150 milliamp hours. And as far as the software goes here with the phone, it does feature Android 10, and I'm assuming that it will not be updated to future versions of Android, so just keep that in mind. So if you're fine with having Android 10 forever, which mostly isn't a huge issue because all of your apps will continue to work very well, then I wouldn't be concerned about it. But if you are somebody that always wants the newest and latest version of Android as it is released, then you might want to get something else. Now with the Umidigi A9 Pro, there are actually two different features that do especially make it stand out from other budget options out there. 
The first one is the smart key on the side. And the second one is that this phone does have a built-in thermometer and the thermometer is located right here. I don't wanna talk about this too much, but all I've gotta say is that I have used it and it does work. And then the other feature, the smart key, is something that isn't necessarily unique to Umidigi, but it is something that we don't really see too often. And anytime that I do see it, I'm certainly a big fan of it. Essentially, with the smart key, you can customize it to quickly access a variety of different apps and other processes here on the phone. But essentially, go to the settings, then go to smart key right there, and you can see that it is set up to do some different things by default, but you can also customize these various functions. For example, if you want to have a single click, open the flashlight, you can do that. So you can see right now with a single click, the flashlight is now enabled. So that's super convenient, especially if you're always using the flashlight on your device. You can also set it up to open up different applications. So this does work with pretty much any application on the phone. So I'm a big fan of that. And you can make other customizations as well for double click and long press. So definitely a big thumbs up for that. Now taking a closer look at the hardware of the phone, the display here, as I mentioned earlier, is 1080p, which is great. It also does get decently bright and I am a big fan of the colors from it too. So they did pick a really good panel to put here on the phone. So that's really fantastic. Taking a look at the left side of the phone, we have the slot for the micro SD card and SIM card. We also have that smart key as I showed you a second ago. Then on the right side of the phone, we have the power button, volume down and volume up. Then up top here, we have nothing. And then on the bottom of the phone, we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, microphone, USB-C port for charging and data transfer, and we have the speaker. And then on the back of the device, we have the camera module, fingerprint sensor, and then the Umidigi logo. So in general, I think this phone has a good practical design and there's really not much else that I'd want to be different about it besides maybe having a hole punch for the front facing camera instead of a water drop notch. But considering that this phone does feature quite a few decent specifications and is very affordable, that doesn't really bother me too much. In general, my experience of using the various cameras on this phone has been acceptable for a phone in this price range. However, it does leave a little bit to be desired. The biggest issue that I had is that focusing can be a bit slow at times, but when it does work, the results are decently good. So if you are someone that loves taking a bunch of different photos and videos, then you might wanna go for something else. But if you are kind of a casual picture taker and the cameras are not necessarily that important to you and you rather prioritize performance, which is really good for what you're paying for with this device, then I feel like the cameras are not a deal breaker. But like I said, if you are looking for the best out there when it comes to photo and video quality, then you probably will be a bit disappointed, but I'll let the results speak for themselves. I also noticed that some of the focusing was a little bit on the slower side as well when taking videos, but again, if you don't keep your expectations too high here with the cameras on the phone, then I feel like you will be satisfied with it. But let's now take a look at some video samples. And here is a front facing test video from the Umidigi A9 Pro. Let me know what you think of the quality for both the video and the actual audio from the video too. What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with a 1080p test video taken with the Umidigi A9 Pro. This is with the main camera. We do have autofocus in video mode, which is good. Maybe not the fastest, but it is there. Oh, doesn't really want to focus that time. Now it is. Kind of. The web browsing experience with the phone in general has been good. The best part about it is that we are getting a large display here, which really does make text nice and big, and then with that resolution does make it crisp and clear as well. Now, things can be a little bit stuttery, a little bit laggy at times, as expected by a budget device, but at the same time, it's perfectly usable and does get the job done. So if you are looking for a device that's really good for reading articles and websites or reading ebooks or anything like that, then this phone will get the job done for you and I think you will be happy with it. So it is a good content consumption phone. This is an out to me. 
their OnePlus 9 series media kit. Now, as you can see, it's all here in one large red box. Now, the video viewing experience with the Umidigi A9 Pro has been a good one. Now, we do just get audio coming out of the main speaker here on the bottom of the phone, but thankfully, things do get decently loud here, so the phone will get the job done if you just want to sit back, relax, and watch video content or listen to music. And then also, since the display is 1080p, like I mentioned earlier on in the video, it does make video content look good, and if you want to, you can crop in further for a more immersive experience. So in general, it's a good phone for watching video content. So in conclusion, is the Umidigi A9 Pro worth buying? I would say in general, this phone features a really nice design. I like that we are getting some unique features with it that you can't find with too many other budget devices. And I like that we're getting a pretty solid processor with the MediaTek Helio P60 and also quite a bit of RAM paired up with it. So I would say in general, really the only thing with this phone that could be a little bit on the disappointing side is the photo and video quality, but at the same time, it still does work. But that's really the only flaw that I could think of here with the phone. But I'm really curious to know what you think about the phone, and if you've used other Umidigi devices in the past, also let me know about that in the comment section below. But this is the Umidigi A9 Pro review. This is Kevin here, and I will see you in the next video.